All right, on your whiteboard, please tell me who is, who am I referring to? They, uh, he is a Greek philosopher who taught reason. He, his work was protected by the Romans and they became the foundation of the Middle Ages. Good, I got eight, nine, 10, 11. Who am I referring to, Donald? Socrates. Socrates. On your whiteboard, please tell me. This half of the former Roman Empire was the first to fall after its division. It was overrun by the Visigoths and the Franks. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Come on now. Abel. The Western Empire. On your whiteboard, please tell me, who are the Roman soldiers who fought for a minimum of 20 years. These soldiers focus on training, discipline, fighting ability, and only one of these had about 6,000 troops. Good. Come on, come on, come on. Good. What do we got? Sloan. Legionnaires. Very nice. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is the capital city of the Roman Empire? What is the capital city of the Roman Empire? Good, good. Patrick, this works better if you're looking at your notes, not other people's boards. What do you got, Cam? Rome. On your whiteboard, please tell me this is done by the Romans with language, government structure, law, roads, and measurements. Everyone was using the same thing throughout the whole empire, good. Maybe you're crushing it over there. All right, good. What do we got? Madison. Standardization. Standardization. Perfect. <laughs> Sorry, Maddie. I was looking at Mad you're Madison and you're Maddie. Okay. All right. One more and then we're going to get going here. On your whiteboard, who is the last unified emperor of Rome? He divided Rome into two empires. The east and the west to avoid falling. I got one, two, three. Who's the guy dividing up Rome? Good. Who is it? What do we got, Jackson? Diocletian. Diocletian. Perfect. All right. <clears throat> so tomorrow you have a vocab quiz. We're going to do the same thing. You're going to come in, do whiteboards. Then at this point tomorrow, I will tell you to take everything off your desk and I'll hand you a quiz sheet. I will pick five out of the 17. I will post the exact same definitions you have on the front of the board, okay? And you can use your word bank and you're just gonna write down which definition I provided. So I'm providing the definition, you're providing the term. Everyone clear? Not a gotcha, just holding you accountable. Everyone good? You shouldn't really be worried. I'm gonna review. And then take a quiz. Perfect. Take out your note packet. It looks like this. Take out your note packet. It looks like this. Right in on the spring you want. Oh, I gave you one. Look at me. Corrupting it. Okay. So take a look at my wall over here. Okay, so tomorrow is Friday. Thank goodness. You have a vocab quiz we've already discussed. Okay, five questions. There's no trick to it. If it's in parentheses, it means we're doing that in class. So tomorrow in class, what are we doing? A map. A map. We're going to do that map sheet. Remember how on the first day of school I gave you a blank map front and back? We're doing that on Monday. Okay, with that being said, if you look at your notes, the first thing we have is a? Map. We're actually going to kind of, I'm going to label some of it right now with you. Then tomorrow we'll actually do the coloring. Does that make sense? Because we're going to have the crayons tomorrow, so we might as well just do a quick color tomorrow. Does that make sense? So we're going to label the map now as a class, and then tomorrow we'll finish it tomorrow. Yes, ma'am? You got it? Perfect. All right. So let's look at our map we're going to label it and tomorrow we'll color what would be the roman empire so we're going to leave it blank we're not going to color it in today but we will color it in tomorrow and unfortunately if you are watching this lecture on canvas 
I cannot show you what my screen looks like while I'm doing a map at the moment, but I will tomorrow, and I'm so sorry. That's for the people on the computer, because <laughs> I'm recording this. So you don't look at me like I'm a complete weirdo, okay, Donald? I'm just trying to tell them that those kids who are listening to it won't have it. I know it makes me look like a crazy person. Here we are. <laughs> You're fine. All right, here we go. So this is the Mediterranean Basin. And so we're going to start labeling with the basics. Now, if this is the Mediterranean Basin, what body of water is this? The Mediterranean Sea. So if you just want to simplify and write med sea, I'm totally fine with that. So this is your Mediterranean Sea. Does anyone know with a hand what body of water is this? It's an ocean. We're going to do oceans and bodies of water really tomorrow on our big map, but does anyone know? If you go to the with a hand, what body of water is it, Richard? Yeah, it's the Atlantic Ocean. It's the Atlantic Ocean. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm not very good at this. Well, I've never been good at it. And then I took a year and a half off, so today's my first day back, and I'm really bad at it. So, does anyone with a hand know what body of water this is? We will label it in pretty much every single one as we go through. It's a color. Brayden? Black Sea. No, yeah, it's a Black Sea. Perfect. This is your Black Sea. And I heard someone shout red. Your Red Sea is actually right here, just so you know. Uh, we're not going to label it, though because you can't really see it, and it's totally fine. So those are your major bodies of water that we care about. So if we're going to talk about the Roman Empire. We've got to label where Rome is. We're just going to write a dot, draw a dot, and we're going to write Rome. That's the capital of Rome. This country right here is Italy, which we need to label. In our note packet, we're going to discuss Greece a little bit. So we're going to label Greece, which is this peninsula here. That's Italy right there? Yep, Italy's the one with the boot. Okay. And Greece is the peninsula next door. Over here is Spain. And right here, we're going to write Gaul, which is what the Romans used to call. In parentheses, we're going to write, what country is it today? France. France. There you go. But we're going to write Gaul because we're going to reference Gaul in our notes. However, today it's called France. Okay? So, we also have this is known as Britain. Now today it's called Great Britain because it owns and controls both Wales, Scotland, and Ireland. But uh, back here, it's just Britain, so we're just gonna label it Britain. So tomorrow, what we're going to do is we are gonna take our color, uh, color pencils or crayons and we're gonna draw the outline of Rome. Nothing hard, okay? But we don't have color pencils or crayons, so we're just gonna move on into our notes and we'll do all of that tomorrow. So we'll save the fun for Friday. All right, so today is your first real day of notes, which is very exciting. This is a pretty small note packet. However, there's a good amount of notes, which is so exciting. Here we go. So on your, nope, that's not working. On your packet, underneath the map, you will see where it says important contributions. That'll match up to the slide I'm about to show you, and you're going to write that information down in that section. If I can make this work. Why won't you do this? Thank you. Okay. Here's your vocab. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All the pictures I've shown you, we've discussed. Here you go. So you're going to write this into that section that says important contributions on your paper. You need to write everything I have. Please do that. So. We're going to start with Rome, as we've discussed, because Rome is the foundation of Western civilization. Rome is the foundation of our civilization. So they think, and I think, it's important that we start with Rome. However, we're going to burn it down tomorrow. Actually, we're going to pretty much burn it down today. So we're not really going to spend that much time on it, but we do need to know its legacy. As we just discussed, it is the foundation of Western society. It is the foundation of our language, because what language, you can raise your hand and tell me what language they speak in Rome. Can? Latin. Latin, absolutely. And the core of most uh, languages in Western Europe is what, Can? Latin. Yeah, it's Latin, because the Romans took it over, absolutely, man. So, it is really important that you understand that the Greeks came first. 
the Greeks came first. The, so the Greek civilization rise and fall. Can anyone tell me who's the most famous of the Greeks? He's really great. Alexander the Great. That's awesome. Thank you for the hand. Yes, you are correct. <laughs> it's Alexander the Great is the most famous of your Greek conquerors. Now, he did conquer a pretty large territory. However, in the grand scheme of things, not nearly as big as most people. But he's one of the first to do it, so that's pretty cool. So, the Greeks are going to rise and the Greeks are going to fall. Okay, so there's no more Greeks, uh, Greek empire. Then the Romans come along. Do the Greeks and the Romans overlap? No, there's no overlap. Okay, so the Greeks rise, the Greeks fall, the Romans rise, the Romans fall, there's no overlap. However, when the Romans come into power, they're like, oh my god, these people were awesome, look at these sculptures, look at this bronze, let's make sure we keep it. So what they do is they create museums. Could you imagine being in ancient Rome and you go to a museum for the ancient Greeks? Wouldn't that be so wild? You don't think that's cool? Oh my gosh, people. That's cool. So the Greeks' history, culture, is preserved by the Romans. The Romans are the ones who save it. The funny thing is, is that after the Romans fall, we have another empire rise. It starts with a B. I've mentioned it. Does anyone know what it is? I've mentioned it a couple times to you. What is the name of the empire that rises after Rome? It starts with a B. Yes, you got it. Huh? Britain? No, Britain is going to rise not until like the 1700s. Um, it's called the Byzantine Empire. The Byzantines are next. Uh, and the Byzantines are going to preserve both the Greeks and the Roman stuff. So it's just kind of like paying for it. Anyway, so the Romans are the reason why we have Greek stuff. The reason why we have Greek and Roman stuff is because of the Byzantine. Isn't that cool? Anyway. So, the Greeks, um, Aristotle, Socrates, are all going to be protected by the Romans, and they're going to be the foundation of Western civilization. The Romans are going to standardize a bunch of stuff, so every civilization after is going to standardize. That's why we all have currency. Why? Because the... Why are all the laws the same? Because of the? There you go. Okay. Our laws are actually based on the laws of Rome. Does anyone know what the laws of Rome are called? Twelve. There's ten. Uh, it's called the Twelve Tables. That is the core and the foundation of our laws here. Uh, in case, you don't need to know that for your exam. But anyway. Art and architecture and their military contributions. Perfect. All right. Okay, in Rome today, this is obviously a photo of modern day Rome. Someone was asking, is that great? Is that the ancient Rome? No, no, it's not. This is present day. Does anyone know what attraction this is in Rome? Dude, you're killing me. Internal dialogue. Internal dialogue. I appreciate your help. I do. I need an internal dialogue. Does anyone know what it's called? It's called the Spanish Steps. It is actually. Uh, built by the ancient Romans. It's been redone a bunch of times, obviously, because, you know, ancient. Uh, and it's called the Spanish Steps. I promise, if you go to Rome and you do a tour, which you probably will, they will show it to you, and you probably will be eating your gelato sitting on these steps. It's quite the thing to do. It's in every movie about Rome, or that's taken place in Rome. Every single one. Even if it's like a drive, like they're driving through the streets of Rome, chasing people and shooting at people, they'll drive by the Spanish Steps. It's like a huge thing. You've never seen this before? It's like a thing. It's like a real thing. All right. So, why did Rome split? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I know there's only two lines, but if you flip the paper over, there's more lines on the other side. Already all of that? Or oh, yeah. yeah. So, start at the bottom. Once you fill out those two lines, then flip to the next. All right. So, why did Rome split? First and foremost, it's too big. It's huge. It is really, really big. Hold on two seconds. I'm going to go back. This is how big Rome was. So 
So when I say it's too big to manage, doesn't that make a lot of sense? Yeah, for, for sure. Like here at Plain High School, there are teachers who break the rules. Can we agree? Yeah. Who do stuff and get away with it because uh, the office hasn't figured it out. Why doesn't the office crack down on every person who breaks the rules? Because the school is too big. But if you really break a rule, do they come crashing down? Hell yeah. But if you do like stupid stuff, they don't really uh, bother too much with it, right? It's kind of like how everything is. If you have a big family, can you get away with more things? Yeah. Yeah, but if you have a small family, you can't really get away. Same type of thing here. The empire was so big, it became really hard to, um, uh, hard to uh, effectively govern. Some parts didn't want to pay taxes, so they wouldn't pay all the taxes. They'd pay enough so they wouldn't get in too much trouble, but not all the taxes they earned. Okay, So it was just causing kind of problems. So here at Plant High School, we have 2,500 students on campus. Okay? Would it be easier or harder to get away with stuff if we add another thousand kids to this campus? <laughs> easier to get away with because the population is so big. If we took away a thousand kids, so we're down to 1,100 kids, would it be easier or harder to get away with stuff? Harder. Harder. There you go. Same type of thing. Okay? The bigger it is, the harder it is to manage. Okay. <clears throat> Conquering all this territory was very expensive. Having a military uh, guarding, expanding, fighting is very expensive. Why are militaries so expensive? Who can raise your hand and tell me why? Why are militaries expensive? Johnny, why do you think a military is expensive? What do you need to have in order to have a military? Um, weapons and stuff. Yeah, you need to have weapons and stuff. And can they be really crappily done, or should they be good ones? Good ones. Yeah, hell yeah. If you have a military, it's a bunch of crappy swords, especially during this time, okay? and they all break as soon as they hit, you know, bones, how effective is your military going to be? Not. Not. So imagine here in 2021, okay, if we send our military men and women to battle, and we sent them in with swords against drones, how well is that going to go for us? Yeah, no, it's not going to go well. So militaries have to make sure they have the most elevated and most relevant weapons in order to use in battle. What else is another, what is the most expensive part of having a military after your weapons? Coordination. No, what do you got? Richard? Food. 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 Food is very expensive. Why? Because A, if you have a large military, that means you have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people to feed. Ladies and gentlemen, is it easy to carry enough food for a thousand people? No. no. Is it easy? Can you just go to the corner store and get that food? No. no. So you have to have strong supply lines, which takes a lot of reinforcement. It is very expensive to have a large military. What do you got? I'm going to. Let, let, let's get everyone there, and then I will happily do it. Is that okay? Here's faster than the rest. Okay? So, protecting all these territories make it very expensive. So, another major issue is that people weren't happy that money was going more towards the military and not towards infrastructure or the things that we care about. Which is actually really funny because this week, actually yesterday, Congress passed a bill. Isn't that exciting? They haven't done that in a long time. And does anyone know what the bill was on? Because this is like a big deal. Like they haven't done anything in Washington. All they do is fight with each other. They've done nothing. They've said, passed no bills except for this one, Donald. And what is it? Isn't it about like education? And no, it's not. It's infrastructure. Mm. Yeah, they're gonna fix our roads. You know how I four is a mess and kind of like a death trap. So the U.S. government, U.S. Senate, and Congress have approved spending. We're gonna get that fixed. So it's gonna be better. Isn't that nice? They're also in that bill. Our governor, DeSantis, with a focus from our, our mayor, Jane Caster, they are going to spend some money on the roads of South Tampa. Yeah. Yay! You won't be swimming in a river anymore. Isn't that exciting? On a rainy day? That's great. That's infrastructure, okay? When things go bad on our roads, 
okay, and things aren't working well, do we love our government or hate our government? Hate. We get very frustrated, correct? Okay. So another major thing. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Another major thing is, I don't know about you, but in 2020, when you went to the grocery store and food wasn't on the shelves, do you remember that? Like peak, peak, peak pandemic when everything was shut down? Oh, yeah. yeah. That was wild, right? Like you couldn't get toilet paper. Like people were like freaking out about toilet paper, couldn't get like paper towels, and like food was pretty sparse on the shelf. Were people happy with the government or angry at the government? Angry. angry. So if the government can't provide basic necessities like toilet paper and basic food items, the people get angry. Same thing is happening here. In every government, if the government is, is not providing basic services, people get upset and start rebelling. Now, did that get fixed pretty quick here in the United States? Yeah, there wasn't a, a complete rebellion. Um, but in other civilizations, it doesn't get as uh, fixed as quickly, and there is just straight up overthrow. Like last I'm pulling up right now. Oh. Okay. Ooh, I'm sorry, Cam. Yeah. Um, and then finally we get to Diocletian. Diocletian is the last real emperor of Rome, and he tries saving Rome by dividing it in two. So did he think he'd be the last emperor of Rome? No. No, he didn't. He was thinking he was going to do the best for it, but uh, it ended up speeding up the process. All right. So, Rome is now divided into two territories, okay? We have the east and the west. East, west, okay? So, what we're going to do is we're going to fill out our map-ish. Let's fill out our map-ish. We're going to do the same things we did on the front. We're going to fill out Mediterranean Sea. It's the same map. You can fill it in. Mediterranean Sea. Flip it back to your front map if you don't know what they are. Med C is the big body of water in the center. Do you, here, if you look at your map, it's very similar to mine. Mediterranean Sea, you're going to write that. You're going to do Black Sea. You're going to do um, Atlantic Ocean. Lots of coloring. Big map and map. So you're just literally copying what you have on the front to the second one. Okay? You need to have Spain. You need to write Spain where Spain belongs. Okay? Remember, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just flip to your the map on the very front. Everything is there. You're going to write where Spain is. You're going to write Gaul. If you want to write parentheses France, that's fine, but I want to see Gaul, not France. Please and thank you. All right? I want you to label Italy, which is the boot. Make sure you have Italy labeled, which is the fancy boot one. I also want you to label Greece and Italy. So Italy, Greece. I also want you to label Rome, which is on the boot. And that's all, oh, in Britain. I want you to label Britain. If you don't know where any of those things are, just flip to the front. I'm sorry, my like projector, my elbow isn't working, isn't hooked up, but it will be tomorrow perfectly and seamlessly. I got a new computer, and I haven't worked out all the kinks yet, but I will. All right, so which side falls first? I'm so sorry. Which side falls first? You have 50-50 shot. Which one, Sloan? Western. Western falls first. Western falls first. Why? Why does, so the East lasts. The East continues on for a very, very long time. It eventually morphs into what we call the Byzantine Empire which is what I'm teaching you next. Why does the East survive, but the West fail? Why? What do you think? Um, what do you think, Patrick? You have no idea. Well, what do you think the East has that the West doesn't? Thank you for listening. The West is going to fall first. The East is going to survive. The East has more what? There's multiple answers that I would accept. More seas? More seas? No, not bodies of water. However, their location will be important later. What is the big uh, ad? Jacob? Uh, better leaders, maybe. 
Okay, they do have some pretty good leaders, but that is not the answer. What do we got? Uh, Max. A military? Um, they're going to have a better military because they have more of it. Money. They have more money. Yeah. Hi. I would be much prettier and smarter if I had more money. Right? Maybe? Yeah, my clothes would be way better. This is Target, dude. Okay, I'm Target. Target. I'm wearing Navy clothes. Oh, hell yeah. I got some more money, too. Don't you think you would, like, look better if you had more money? Fancy clothes? Come on, now. Well, that is nice for you. I like fancy clothes, and I think I would look prettier with fancier clothes. If I had more money, I would have nicer things, yes? Yes, that makes logical sense. If I have more money, I'll have nicer things. I'll have a nicer house. I'll have a nicer car. Even though I drive my dream car to Mini Cooper, it is so damn cute. It's bright red. It's so cute. Okay? All of that. Same things happen with civilization, ladies and gentlemen. Do you want to live in a, in a poor country? No. 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 Life is... Hard in a poor country. You have dirty water, you have dirty streets, you have all these things. If you have dirty water and dirty streets, are you more likely to die of diseases? Yes. Yes. The poorer the country, the harder the conditions. The people may be absolutely wonderful and fabulous and all those things, but life is harder. Patrick, I'm not up here for my house. Thank you kindly. The more money you have, the better your quality of life is. Can we agree? Yes. I'm not saying you'll be happier because you have all this money, okay? Materials can't buy happiness. Fine. However, it makes your life easier. Mm. The East has plenty of money. And why do they have plenty of money? Hold on. No. Um, my man James is going to help me. James, why do they have more money? Why do you, how does a country make money, James? Jobs. Jobs doing what? Working. So if I go to work here, I'm making the U.S. money. No, that's not how the U.S. makes money. Trading. Trading, yes. See, that's a good, thoughtful answer. Trade, trade. So why does the East have all this money, James? They're trading. They're trading. Yes, they're trading. Ladies and gentlemen, they're trading. East is trading. Does anyone know who they're trading with? Who are they trading with? What do we got for me, Madison? It's where all of our stuff today comes from. I bought this at Target, but you know it's probably made at China. China. <laughs> yeah, China. Okay? All of these goods. Taylor, I'm so glad you're here. So why don't you fully be here? Thank you kindly. So all of these goods are coming from China. Okay? All of these goods are coming into East Asia, and that is the biggest component. East uh, Europe. Western Europe is literally playing with sticks. Nothing is going on there. Throughout the whole course, I'll always be telling you where is the best place to live during this time and where is the worst place to live. The worst place for a really, 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 really long time is going to be Europe. Western Europe is dirty and gross. They have like no math, no science. So if you have no math and science, do you have any comforts? No, nothing is really going on in Western Europe right now. Not good. Eastern Europe is doing pretty damn well, but the best place in the world to live right now is in the Middle East. In the Middle East, they have hospitals, they have uh, clinics, they have the cleanest people in the world. If you're living in Western Europe, you take a bath maybe once a year. That's how gross these people are. And they're dying of disease and they have very short lives because they're just filthy and gross and they don't understand the world around them. Uh, China is also a pretty great place to live. People are living long, healthy lives there. So that's pretty good as we go. All right, here we go. Next section. See ya. Tomorrow you do have a vocab quiz. Have a wonderful day. Please put your boards away in the front of the room. Do not abandon them in the back. Have a great day, guys.